Welcome back, scholars. We're going to be working with warm and cool colors from our color wheel. We're going to start with our warm colors, red, orange, and yellow, sometimes green if it has yellow to it, and then our cool colors, which are blue, green, and purple. These are the colors that we're going to be focused on. Now let's look at those colors individually. Starting with our warm color, we have red like fire, orange like the sunset, and yellow like the sun, warm colors. Now to our cool color palette, let's go with blue like the sky, green maybe like the forest, and our purple like dawn or dusk cool combinations. Warm and cool color palette is what we're going to be working on today. Let's look at our design. We're going to be doing a landscape combination with warm colors on top and cool colors below with our land and our skies. Two different color palettes mixed together and identifying our cool and warm colors. All right, let's get started. A blank sheet of paper. And we'll be working on half of it today and we'll let you continue on. We're gonna start with a line right across the middle. This is called a horizon line. And that divides the sky from the land. So we're going to do the upper part in warm and the lower part in cool. Draw a straight line across the center of your page the horizon line. Let's start in our sky, starting with a round ball for our sun. We will be eventually putting rays in our sun. The horizon line, we're going to start building in our mountains. We're going to use straight and pointed lines to represent our mountainscape. Nice long strokes, angled lines for our mountain effect. So we have our sun and we have the mountains on one side. Let's go to the other side. We're going to do the same thing, jagged lines to represent our mountains. Let's make one with a nice tall point on it to the edge, make it look mountainy. You define what your mountain wish should be. The only thing we're going to look at is see this space that I left open? We're going to try to create a river coming off of our mountain into our water past our horizon line. Curve line and then stop and then go straight. Curve line to the horizon line and then angle the other way. This makes it look like there's a riverbed coming into our water. Back to our sun. It has to create some rays around our sun and we're gonna color those in different colors. So we'll create some nice wavy lines to represent our curved line elements for our sun. All right, we are going to be using the lower part below the horizon line in the warm area with our, our river bid, and we're going to contrast it at the bottom with our cool colors. So we're going to start at the bottom where the land is at and we're gonna make long, big, wide curves representing our land. Notice the lines are nice and curved. We're gonna start on both sides, making nice long curves from our horizon line, which will make our river that runs into our lake there. Nice curved lines. All right, nice big curves for the landscape in front, okay? Great. This project is based off of our theme of an artist called Ted Harrison, and he does a lot of landscapes like this. So he is going to be our uh, mentor person that we're using from his painting style. All right, let's get into our colors. We'll need our color palette, which we decided were warm colors and cool colors. We're going to put the warm colors above in our sun and our mountain area. And then we're gonna use our cool colors below, which are our blue, green, and purple. 
So above is going to be warm colors and below is going to be our cool colors. All right, make sure you all have all the correct markers like I have lined up here all ready to go. We'll start at the top with our warm colors and we will put them around the sun and the mountains. Let's look at our example again. Nice bright colors on top. We'll start in the sky. Starting with our sun, we are going to leave the circle white and we're going to start around it. So we're going to start with tracing always, leaving that center and then trace the outline of that, carefully outlining it. Remember, we always trace first. And now remember when we color in, we go straight up and down in one direction. We try not to change directions too often. Makes our work look nice rather than scribbling. So we're not scribbling, nice straight lines. That makes a drawing look automatically cleaner and more perfect. All right, we have our yellow. Now notice that I put a different color around the color. I didn't use the same color right next to each other. So we're going to go with our orange. Also, we are going to try to leave a white line. We're not going to go right up against our yellow. We're going to leave a white space in between. Just like our example, we're going to trace out up the mountain, all the edges, curved lines. Then we're ready to marker it in. Again, trace around, trace around a little bit wider, and then begin to fill in in straight line strokes, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. When you get to the edge, retrace that line, and it helps clean up that edge really nicely. All right, take your time. Do not rush. All right, so we've got the first line. We have two of our warm colors, yellow and orange. That also goes to the other side. So let's trace this side as well. Straight around. Always trace. Let's make sure we don't scribble out of the lines, okay? And then as long of a stroke as you can, try to make your strokes as long as possible. Up and down, up and down. We can come back and fill in some areas later. Come around the edge and fill in whatever extra. That makes our work look nice and the strokes nice and smooth and even. All right, now we have used yellow and orange. What color should we use next? Ah, very good. Red is our next warm color. Remember, we're using different colors each time leaving a white space in between, carefully outline the next shape. Take your time, don't rush. Let's see how well your line strokes can be. Very good. Let's see how our motor skills are. How carefully can you work? Outline it around each corner and then come back and do your long strokes. Straight up and down, up and down. Up and down until you get to the corner and then you fill in. But try as much as possible to do your big strokes first. Nice job of leaving a space between each color. Good job. So we have yellow, orange, and red. Mountain time, let me see. We have orange head here and we have red. So we don't want the colors to touch the same color. So let's use yellow here, leaving that white space in between. And let's trace along our first mountain. It's in the background. I'm going to color that nice and yellow. Good. Now we don't have two colors touching each other. All right, let's look at our next one. We have orange and we have yellow there. So we probably should not use orange. So let's use red, all right? Let's trace it, leaving that space. 
taking our time going around, not touching the other one. Straight up the mountain and across. Nice full strokes. Go as straight as you can and then go around and go as straight as you can. Good job. Now, none of the same colors touch and that's exactly what we want. All right, our next color palette, we have red and then the sky has that orange. So what I'm gonna do is create another line so I can put a different color between. I don't want two oranges there because I thought I would use orange next. So let's fill that in with yellow. Now our two colors we have to not touch are red and yellow. Now we can use our orange. So again, carefully trace, leaving the white. Now this is when we need to take our time and think our way through. It's no rush. You want to take your time and pace. You can always come back and finish up later. Straight line across. Always close out your object. That way it is time to, when it's time to fill it in, you don't have to worry about it having a poor edge to it. You know exactly how to stay on the lines. Notice how I'm going up and down, up and down. Right? Nice straight strokes all the way to the end. And then we'll come around the bottom and fill in those edges. Okay? Good job. All right, we have the sun and we have the mountains. All right, we have used our warm colors. Now we'll look, we'll be cool colors down there. So we are going to gather up our warm colors for this half of it and say goodbye. We're going to get our cool colors and we're going to go beneath. As you're working on yours, you can do both sides, but we're going to do just half today. So let's start with our ocean using a cool color below the horizon line. We're going to outline, leaving that white line along the edge and trace very carefully along the big slopes of our land. You'll notice here that I'm going to try to leave a little bit of the white long stroke lines so it kind of looks like there's waves in our riverbed. Again, as straight a lines as you can in that area. So it kind of looks like it's the water. Okay, pretty good. Not too many white lines in there, okay? All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, our next part is our river. We're gonna leave white, but the land, we're going to start with our next cool color, which is green. Let's trace it out, leaving that space, carefully outlining, leaving a white line. All right, trace it all the way around. You guessed it, nice long strokes, up and down. Making sure we don't go outside of the line, okay? Then when you get to that part, figure out a way you can make a nice long strokes, long strokes. And actually you color them faster when you do nice long strokes rather than super short strokes throughout. And our last warm color, we have blue, we have green. So what do we need next? We're going to go with purple. We're going to trace it out along the edge, leaving that white space in between, all the way around the edge, and then nice long strokes. Up and down. You can even see the lines in the marker. There we go. All right, so now we have our warm color, cool colors start, blue, green, and purple. Now the land is pretty much, I'm showing purple and the green. So 
let's try to keep that theme for our land part and leave the blue for just the water. So since we had green and purple, let's add another row of green and I would finish that on out. All right, so I'm going to let you trace whatever your pattern is, understanding that the water and the um, riverbed has to stay white and not get colored in. So we're going to do the mountains and the land in warm and cool colors. Cool at the bottom, warm at the top. Yellow, orange, and red. And then our blue with our riverbed at the bottom. All right. I hope you enjoy this. Take your time. Make sure your colors and your lines are there and enjoy the process. Always have your right colors with you, warm and cool colors, and have fun.